Are you introducing yeah, thanks, this legislation because you believe that a shutdown is inevitable tonight? Now, this is about the fifth time we've prepared it since I've been here in the last three years. We do it on a bipartisan basis. We have lots of Republicans and Democrats. We just want to make sure that you know, the 1.2 million federal workforce uh, has some sense that at the end of the shutdown, if there is one, they'll still get paid. They know they can make their mortgage payment, make their car payment, make the tuition. So, so Congressman, we just had uh, one of your colleagues, a Republican co colleague from Oregon, Greg Walden, on. Uh, and the point he made powerfully was we have the children's health insurance program in the resolution as it is right now. Doesn't have DACA on it. Why don't the Democrats get behind CHIP and deal with DACA down the road? Well, we've, uh, it's been a long time since President Trump basically rescinded DACA that came out under President Obama. We only have to March 5th. So week after week, day after day, they have refused to negotiate on it. And we don't really seem to be that close. Every time they take a, a reasonable bipartisan compromise to the White House, Stephen Miller or somebody there kills the thing. So CHIP is good. Um, but let's also remember that one of the biggest reasons for opposing this, and why I think six Republican senators are going to oppose it, is that we have really cr critically uh, impaired the military's ability to make its decisions. We, we, every Democrat voted to give them some extension back at, on September 30th for 90 days. This is now the fourth time. We've done it 136 days already. General Mattis, who's our Secretary of Defense, and all the other military leaders say, give us a budget, please. Congressman Walden also called this a Schumer shutdown. How concerned are you that the Democrats will get most of the blame for this? I don't think we'll get any of the blame. The Republicans control the White House, the Senate, and, and the House. They can do whatever they want. The only reason they even need Democratic votes is because there's so much internal confusion and dissension within the Republican ranks. So when you have control of everything, it's hard to blame it on the guys that are, are the little guys in the minority. So, so, Congressman, I mean, you are a prominent businessman. I must say, I probably bought a car or two from you in my oh, day there in Northern Virginia. Thank, th yeah, thank but, you, but, but going to Congress, having had that experience, you must just think this is a bizarre way to run a show. I mean, this is the, uh, you yeah. can't run a business this way. If you ran your business this way, you'd be out of business. So why can't this but, get fixed? David, I, I, you know, I'm only in my second term, and I wish I were at the table, and I heartily agree with you. You know, when uh, <laughs> in all the years I've been selling cars, the goal is to get to an agreement. And usually we're compromising. I, I don't make as much money as I'd like, and the customer doesn't pay as little money as they like. And you find ways to work on both ends until you get something that, that works for both people. And we don't seem to be very good at that here. A, a, a breakthrough could come if there is an agreement on the immigration, but President Trump has even undermined his own uh, initiatives by Republican congressional leaders. So who will end up taking the initiative and the lead on getting that breakthrough? Well, you know, uh, John Kelly, the, the chief of staff, laid out some fairly reasonable, moderate bipartisan positions the other day which the president quickly undermined. But it, there are moderate proposals, one by Republican Will Hurd and Democrat Pete Aguilar. You put it on the floor, almost everybody in both parties would vote for it. But the leadership, the Paul Ryans and the Miss McConnells, have to be brave enough to let the members of both parties vote on it. And I think he got that. President Trump would sign it. So, so Congressman, you, as you say, you've only been there for a short, relatively short period of time from a very different background. As you look around and see how it, the business is really getting done there, how much of this is principle, how much is this policy on the one hand, and how much of it is just pure political calculation, particularly in the House, for what's going to happen in November? Well, no, I think there, there is principle there. Um, you know, not always principles that I agree with. I mean, there are conflicting values. You have uh, very hostile anti-immigrant voices in the House, people like Steve King from Iowa, um, who are going to oppose any attempt to let these dreamer kids have a, a chance to stay in the United States. So there, there's a debate there. Um, but I don't, there don't seem to be too many people looking forward to November. They're, they don't seem to be making decisions that would maximize their ability to win again. And Congressman, let me just uh, switch the topic completely because we're now hearing that Amazon's second uh, headquarters could be headed or one of the finalists for that could be uh, Virginia, Northern Virginia. Um, what uh, You, of course, are from that state. What, what are the states doing right now to try to get that business? How do you think it would change your state if that comes through? 
Well, yeah, it's the whole metro D.C. area. Three of the top 20 were Northern Virginia, suburban Maryland, and Washington, D.C. Any of those three would be great for the economic vitality of our area. But we're pretty strong already. But uh, Governor McAuliffe and now Governor Northam in Virginia are both doing a really good job of selling Virginia all its incredible advantages. Very highly skilled workforce, a great gene pool. It's beautiful. Um, and it's historic, and it will be a great place for Amazon to be. I understand Jeff Bezos has recently purchased or built a home in the Washington area. He owns the Washington Post. This, uh, I think we probably buy more books than any place else in the country. <laughs> this would be a great place for Amazon. Okay, Congressman, thank you so 